tell you people what is going on. I, um, oh, I should have worn my GTI shirt. Hold on. <laughs> that is more like it. Maybe a little, a little too tight, but uh. Anyhow, today I'm gonna to be reviewing my ownership and the observed reliability of the 2014 Mark VI GTI. If you're into GTIs, I suggest you check out some of my other videos. I also produce videos on cars that I find interesting, as well as attempted mechanics. Uh, some people actually say attempted car murder, which is probably closer. Anyhow, I've had this Volkswagen for about a year and a half now and have already driven around 70,000 miles since then for a total of 130,000 miles on the odometer. Yep, that's, that's a lot of miles. That's around 46,000 miles a year. I didn't initially plan on driving this much, but it sort of just kind of happened. So what kind of events happened during those 70,000 miles? And would I buy this car again if given the choice? We will find out. The very first thing I'd like to touch upon is the perceived reliability of these cars. I mean, these cars are about as German as they come. Being German means a few things. It means well-assembled interiors. It means a stable chassis. It means smooth chocolate. And sometimes it also means questionable reliability. Now, according to consumer reports over the past like 20 years or so, German cars on average have had more problems and more expensive repairs than their Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and North American counterparts. I mean, don't get me wrong, North America's had some bad cars, but this is just kind of an average. And I, I think it's kind of fair to say that a lot of these problems stem from over-engineering and, and kind of a lack of um, research and development in some areas. Why is this dude just riding his bike and then get out of the road? His shirt said safety first. He's riding in the middle of the road with no helmet on. The hypocrisy. All right, back on track. But the thing is, newer Volkswagen Audi vehicles don't just fall apart like a Hummer H3T on the Rubicon. No, they, they are very well put together for the most part. The issues generally lie in widespread design flaws. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples. The two liter TSI's intake manifold runner, the position sensor, the plastic timing chain tensioner that wears out, and the direct injection engine's infamous ability to build up carbon deposits. But I mean, the, the Volkswagen Audi Group isn't the only German automaker to have these faults. BMW and Mercedes have plenty of these examples too, don't get me wrong. Oh God, especially BMW. BMWs are known for the rod bearing failure and the, the turbo failures when they place them inside the, the V configuration in their engines. You got the Mercedes oil filled engine mounts that go and various electronic failures. So to bring it back around to the GTI, these cars might have a little bit of a reputation for being unreliable, but not unpredictably so. And I mean, that doesn't necessarily make them bad cars. In fact, in my opinion, they're actually quite good cars. I'm going to list a few of the reasons why I really like my GTI. I really like the build quality and assembly quality. Everything that you usually touch on a regular basis feels really well made and of high quality. I really like the seats and the comfort that this car offers for the price point. And although the seats are kind of minimally adjustable, they do offer a lot of support um, and they're pretty stylish with the whole plaid cloth. I love the way this car drives. The two liter is smooth revving. It's got a light clutch and it has a quick shifter that feels really good in your hand. The steering wheel is also very comfortable. It just fits your hands so nicely. The chassis is great. It feels stable in almost all conditions. And the handling is precise. Not overly heavy, just right. The GTI's short wheelbase makes it fairly nimble on winding roads and in tight parking spots. And uh, the low end torque from this engine is a lot of fun, trust me. Also, ooh, the stereo in this car is 
the best you can get pretty much for this price point. The clarity of the speakers and the head unit is great. And uh, the OEM suspension setup seems to absorb the bumps pretty well too. It doesn't really translate into the seats very much. Um, you can feel the road. There's a lot of detail in the imperfections of the road uh, and you can feel the steering wheel as well, but it's not harsh, you know, it doesn't hurt. And that's what you want out of a, a sporty oriented car. For, for a car this size, a small car, there's actually a really impressive amount of room in the cabin. There's plenty of room for four adults. Oh, and uh, one other thing, the car has pretty decent aftermarket and tuning support. So before I dive into the things I don't like about the GTI, let me just tell you the things that I have done to the car first. My car is lightly modified. It's got a Unitronic cold air intake, high flow downpipe, and a Unitronic stage 293 octane tune. And uh, it's really easy to make significant power gains with just relatively little modifications. Uh, and according to Unitronic's dyno charts, the car should be making around 288, 290 brake horsepower. Rev up your engines! And a little south of 320 foot pounds of torque. But that, that's a huge gain from the stock, like 200 horsepower, 208 foot-pounds of torque, whatever it is. Alrighty, moving on to the things that I dislike about the Mark VI GTI. The first thing, chassis rigidity. Chassis rigidity. To my knowledge, they addressed this in the Mark VII GTI, but with the Mark VI, in order for it to be a track weapon, you really need to add just copious amounts of bracing to stiffen up the chassis. And this point directly relates to my next gripe about the GTI, which is the fucking creaking cabin. When you drive over uneven surfaces, the chassis flexes. It just does a little flex. And all of the door seals, they rub against each other and just make this obnoxious creaking noise. I've been able to keep the creaking at bay with a special formula I've concocted. I've been able to keep them at peace with the blend I've created, but even that seems to be failing. He spends every waking hour plotting revenge against those who turned him. But it's just a, <laughs> I just bought silicone lubricant, sprayed it on the uh, the door seals. But still, that's just, that's obnoxious. I have to periodically apply it. Anyhow, another thing I dislike is how VW designed some of the major components of their cars to need complete replacing if the sensor goes bad. The intake manifold runner sensor went and I need to get an entire new intake manifold. Sometimes I get like a periodic fault code for some radiator sensor or something. And, and I looked into it and in order to replace the sensor, you need to replace the whole entire radiator. Unless you get this Mercedes Benz sensor, then do some splicing and dicing. And anyway, you get the picture. Uh, I'm just gonna rattle off a couple other things I dislike about the car. The engine bay is too tight. I don't have freaking toothpicks for fingers. The shifter can be notchy and has a little bit too much play. I'm in third gear now. Look at this, look at that play. And to me, the overall look of the car isn't exactly striking. And a lot of aftermarket parts scream distasteful adolescence, which contributes to the car's bad reputation for being a punk ass, teenager, no good doer car, you know? The light clutch leads to less fatigue, but it also leads to less clutch feel. The position of the damn voice command button on the dang steering wheel always depresses when you turn the steering wheel lock to lock. And I also depress when that happens. No phone connected. Please connect a paired phone. In order You're to pair a new phone, follow the instructions in the phone menu Stop. of your car. The two liter TSI engine has proven time and time again that it is very difficult to make it sound aggressive without sounding too much like a stereotypical four banger or just an old tractor for that matter. The turbo is, is too small to continue making power numbers in the, in the higher RPM range. So the stock turbo has led people to say stuff like it runs out of steam on the highway. And I, I can assure you that this is the case. A very popular mod is often upgrading to a larger turbo like the KO4. Okay, so this last thing that I dislike about the car, uh, I'm not sure if I really thought I could find more things, but the throttle response. I, it's just, I, I know it's probably something to do with the tuning. I don't know if it's like a Unitronic thing or, but the RPM, they, they just hang too long when you rev the engine. Again, I'm, I'm pretty new to the whole tune world. If you guys know a trick or a secret, hit me up in the comments. I would really appreciate that, thank you. 
let me run through some of the problems that I've had with the GTI since I bought it at 70,000 miles. I have no idea what part of town I'm in right now. Whew. The first two issues of the car I ever had were actually right after I purchased it. Uh, it was a bad wheel bearing, no big deal. Uh, the second one was the intake manifold runner code, which is a slightly bigger deal, but thankfully it was replaced under warranty. Very, very common issue with these engines, and that leads to a rough running engine. Um, the third issue that I started having with the GTI was was I, I started to hear a rattling slash ticking noise uh, that almost sounded like engine knock. So I got pretty freaked out when this happened. Uh, it just it progressively got a little louder and a little louder. Finally, I took it into the shop. I was like, please just check this out for peace of mind. I just want to make sure my engine's not going to blow up. And thankfully, I did take it in because it ended up being the timing chain tensioner, uh, another inherent fault with these engines. The tensioner is just made out of this cheap material that wears out and, and uh, therefore adds some slack to the timing chain, which is not good because this is an interference engine. If the timing chain slips, you're gonna have parts clashing into one another inside the engine, most likely resulting in you needing a rebuild or a brand new engine. Um, this is the single biggest problem that arises from these two liter engines. And, and these engines were used all throughout Volkswagen Audi's lineup between the late 2000s and about 2014 or so. The timing chain tensioner is a relatively expensive fix because it typically requires uh, kind of pulling the engine out and just a lot of hours of labor, but still way, way cheaper than a brand new engine. So there, there's actually, there's a way to tell if you have the updated version of the timing chain tensioner. There's, there's a number on the side of it. Um, I'll link to a video below in the description showing you how to check and see if you have the updated version. Seriously, keep an ear out for that abnormal kind of ticking, clacking noise, because uh, again, biggest problem with these two liter engines. These fixes usually run between 1200 bucks and $1,800. Mine was right in the middle there, but knock on wood, I haven't had an issue since. The fourth issue I've run into was mostly a byproduct of my modifications that I've done. After I installed the new cold air intake, it started making this really loud whining noise under, under heavy load and acceleration. It sounded like an air leak somewhere. And it became even worse once I flash tuned it and started making more boost. It turned out to be the OEM diverter valve leaking boost under pressure. This failure actually happens quite often. It's usually due to the placement of the OEM diverter valve. Uh, where it's subjected to just constant heat from the engine. There's actually kits that you can buy that uh, relocate the diverter valve, diverter valve relocator kit, but I decided to go with a go fast bits diverter valve spacer. Again, I'll link that in the description below. And that completely just fixed my boost leak and that awful whining sound. So also I noticed a lot sharper throttle response after getting that. The fifth issue I've encountered in my GTI travels is clutch slip under high loads. The clutch slip right now isn't bad enough where it's not drivable. And that's kind of why I've been putting off changing the clutch. I actually, I actually bought a stage two clutch from ECS Tuning uh, that's rated at 400 foot pounds, but I haven't really had a dedicated amount of time or money to install that. But I'll definitely do an update video once I do install that. Ah, yes, and as far as the carbon buildup goes, um, I've been periodically sea foaming my engine um, and it seems to be working pretty well because I haven't had any issues yet. I'm at 130,000 miles. So check out this video of all the carbon deposit shit that's coming out of my exhaust. <laughs> The darker the stuff is coming out the exhaust, the better, because that's all the carbon. Okay, I'm gonna try and wrap this up quick. The sixth and most current issue I've had with the GTI is um, the subframe bolts stretching, and so the subframe is kind of slipping. So sometimes you'll hear like a creaky, clunking sound coming from when you turn at slow speeds, um, especially if you're maneuvering in a parking lot. Yeah, like I said, this is due to the bolts actually stretching out because they're kind of wimpy built. So so uh, I went ahead and I purchased some aftermarket ones. Uh, I got them from Tyrol Sport. So they have yet to come in the mail, but, but you bet I'll be doing a before and after installed video of them once they arrive. All right, so bottom line, the VW GTI offers an incredible bang for the buck by using a tried and true formula, making its base model, the Golf, one of the most popular cars around the globe. 
It is easy to make fast, yet it is far more practical than most other sporty cars. <laughs> the GTI absolutely has its inherent issues, but now that you know what they are, hopefully you can feel a little more comfortable in buying one of these fun little cars by knowing what to look out for when you search for a used one. And uh, to answer the question that I posed at the beginning of this video, yes, I would absolutely buy another Mark VI GTI if I had to do it all over again. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you next time when I probably destroy my car with another distasteful adolescent modification. <laughs>